Hello ladies and gentlemen, it's the Historical Gamer once again, and today I'm going to be playing part 3 of my Rule the Waves Let's Play with Tortuga, XTRG, and myself as we play through a succession series of Rule the Waves as playing as France. If I'm out of breath, sorry, I just ran downstairs and grabbed my headphones and now I'm back, so uh, maybe I should have waited a few more moments, but I'm out of shape and I'm out of breath. Um... So, when we left off last time, we were almost at war with Italy. And that's where we're at right now. But I've got a little bit of a story to tell you. You may notice a few minor differences between the last time we played. First of all, we left off in January. It's now February. And second of all, the budget looks a little bit different, right? The funds are the exact same, but the budget's slightly different. A bigger difference you'll notice is if we take a look at the existing fleets... We still have our 11 battleships with 4 under construction. We still have our 8 heavy cruisers with 1 under construction. What may look different is Italy only has 6 battleships instead of 8, although I believe they were building 3 at the time, and the United Kingdom has 3 or 4 fewer battleships than they did. Uh, Germany is something like 4 fewer, and these fleets in general look a little bit different outside of France, which is still about the same. The reason for that is because I'm an idiot. Uh, long story short, I'm an idiot. I was in the middle of recording this episode a couple days ago, and I made a snafu and realized I wasn't really recording, and I was about six months into a war with Italy, and a lot had happened, and I thought, all right, I'll just go back to a previous save, but the way that this game works is almost borderline Iron Man-like, where you don't really have multiple saves for the same game, per se, outside of just the, the autosave, so... I ended up getting way far ahead, then in trying to retrieve it, I ended up deleting it by mistake, and everything was gone. And I didn't want to start the whole series over again, I know we're only episode 3, but, you know, I, I, I thought it would be a little bit foolish to completely start over. So, I just spent about 5 or 6 hours rebuilding Italy, or rebuilding France, exactly as it was when we left it. You'll notice all the classes are the same. Some of the construction dates are a little bit different, you'll see a lot of 1900 ships. Um, the date of the, the start was January. I moved one month, but all in all, that was all the same. All the ships are the same classes, um, although you'll notice the Ocean class, which I still call the Ocean class, actually shows us the Fryland on, the, uh, on this map here. That's because in order to get this design back, I had to start a new game, copy the file for the ship, rename the file, and then move it into this game. So that was one minor thing. Uh, or sorry, the Trident class. And then the uh, the Ocean class is named properly, but the Trident class wasn't. Because somehow France starts with technology that you can't build. Like, if you tried to build this as a brand new class design, France hasn't designed wing turrets yet, so you can't do that. But somehow the game starts you with ships that you don't have the technology to support. Which is a little bit odd. Uh, the Marangino, and I, I know I'm butchering the pronunciation, the exact same. Uh, the Gideon and the Dupri Tours are both the exact same. Um, but again, these were classes I had to redesign or rebuild and, and get back in. And some of the ships you couldn't afford if you did the manual uh, fleet build. So I had to do some finagling with finances to allow me to afford the uh, ships. Um, and then design and then kind of immediately consider them complete. I'm slightly further ahead in terms of research. Um, we're on turn two for AP projectiles. We were on level one before, and then we've got, uh, I believe, heavy secondary batteries we didn't quite have yet. The rest of this is all roughly accurate. Um, but we're about 16 months into the game, even though it says February of 2000 or 1901, we are about, about six months further into the game. So research has progressed accordingly. Um, anyway, guys, sorry for that snafu, but otherwise, everything should all be more or less the same. Tensions with Italy, like I said, the exact same. Everybody else was around 5 and 4 between Japan and Great Britain, and, you know, those things are roughly uh, the same as they were before. Um, and again, we have a little bit more money. Uh, our budget is actually a little bit smaller than Italy, which seems about wrong, but we also have a, a stronger navy because of the way the game shook out um, with, the, with the new restart, so... Um, you know, uh, things balance out, I suppose. But anyway, that's where we're in right now. We're in February 1901. I think our goal is still to go to war with Italy, and hopefully I can show you a 
interesting conflict should that occur. But I just wanted to let you know where we're at, why we're at this place. Uh, at the end of the day, France is in the exact same situation it was before. Uh, tensions are roughly the same, um, but you know a few discrepancies between the game as it was before and as it is now. I do have a backup of the save, so if anything like that happens again, uh, well, it won't happen again. Um, so that's where we are. It's February 1901, and um, I'm debating building another Lactuch Treville. And again, I'm, I really apologize, guys. I'm not even going to really remotely try to pronounce these correctly because I can't. Um, but we're now <laughs> uh, considering building another one of these once some of our other battleships get complete. These uh, construction ships should all be within a month or two of where they were when we left off. Um, the biggest difference is the dock size is delayed by six months, uh, but it is what it is. So we'll go ahead and we'll move forward to March. And okay, so our prime minister is expressing concern that our forces in the Mediterranean are, in, are insufficient considering the threat from Italy. And you know what? Frankly, he's probably right. Um, our top spies managed to get a hold of the blueprints for the new Italian ship, uh, heavy cruiser Elba, uh, currently under construction. Okay. So if we take a look at this heavy cruiser of Italy, uh, we can see relatively weak armor, only four and a half inch belts, one and a half deck, four and a half turrets. So relatively weak armor, 7,800 tons, 20 knots. So slower than the cruisers were making, less armor than the cruisers were making. Same main gun size uh, and a very heavy secondary armament of 12 seven inchers. Um, I don't think that's, that's a little bit weaker than ours though. So we're in slightly better shape, although it doesn't look like they put theirs in turrets, which gives us some an advantage, but probably they have a firepower advantage. So heavy seas will have the advantage, uh, in calm seas, Italy may have the advantage, although our armor is much stronger. Um, unfortunately I can't do multiple windows, which would be a great feature, uh, for the, um, you know, for the for Ruled Waves 2, which is currently uh, apparently under production or, or being worked on. But our cruiser, much larger, almost twice the size, double the armor, same main armament, but uh, actually the same secondaries, but in, in double, double turrets, although that means a lower rate of fire, and then a vastly superior secondary armament, although no torpedo tubes, which the Italian cruiser has as well. We're also faster. So all in all, I'm pretty comfortable with our, our ship being better than the Elba class. I'd even pit our Gideon against the Elba, although the main guns are slightly smaller and weaker. The belt armor hopefully makes up for that. Um, okay, so with that being said, we've got about four point or forty eight hundred eighty thousand uh, dollars. The redoubtable should be completed, and then maybe we'll look at laying down a new ship. Uh, meanwhile, our prime minister has expressed concern with the fact that we may go to war with Italy, and our fleet seems insufficient. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of leave the tridents in northern Europe. I'm not totally happy with these ships. They're pretty poor in terms of their design, and I just I don't think they're going to be very useful in the event of a war. But what I will do is I'll, I'll pull the tridents all back to the home waters. We'll have four of these kind of pathetic 14 or 15,000 tonners with these weird single turrets. Uh, we'll pull these guys back to, they are heavily armored, which is nice, but we're going to pull them back to uh, the North Sea or Northern Europe, and then we're going to move the Ocean class, uh, which is uh, four 12-inch guns with strong armor, uh, slightly smaller than the Trident, interestingly. Uh, but we'll move the Ocean class and the Marangino classes, those seven battleships. We're going to move them uh, to the Mediterranean en masse. Uh, and then main reason I'm pulling back the Tridents is to prevent us from, you know, having to uh, be blockaded, which could happen, uh, happened in the war that I uh, fought and deleted. Um, so we just need to be careful about that. I'm also going to move our heavy cruisers, uh, two Gideons and two Depriturois, to the Mediterranean. Uh, because in the event of a war, I'm sure we're going to need cruisers uh, to deal with them. And then we're also going to need to move some destroyers, frankly, because, well, you need destroyers to screen your fleet. So we're going to move a whole bunch of destroyers uh, to the Mediterranean. Uh, our best class right now, which is the Falconau. Uh, you can see here it's a 500 ton destroyer, two above water torpedo tubes, uh, some secondary guns, um, but those aren't really the key. It's really the torpedo tubes. Uh, superior, in my opinion, to the Javelin, cla Javelin class. So it's actually the Frond. Uh, yeah, it is the front. Okay. Um, so that's what we're going to do there. And then we're going to move some light cruisers as well. Some of ours are already on foreign station, which is fine. Um, I actually think I'm going to move the Cosimo. Uh, it's more of a raiding cruiser, really. It's very weak armor, but strong 
uh, strong uh, primary guns, eight of the seven inchers. I don't know where I'm going to move this. I'm not quite sure. Uh, maybe we move it to, is there an east, do we have an eastern Africa? Is that something on the map? What's this region? The Indian Ocean. We're going to move it to the Indian Ocean. It can help deal with the Italian colony of Eritrea in the event of a war. So we'll go and strengthen our Indian Ocean squadron um, with that. And then we'll go ahead and move some of the other Safox light cruisers to the Mediterranean as well. So we're really stripping uh, west, we're really stripping northern Europe and strengthening the Mediterranean. But again, in all likelihood, our war, if it shall come, will be against Italy. Uh, and we should definitely use our advantage in terms of our firepower. You can see here, vastly, almost double their battle fleet, on par with heavy cruisers. Uh, behind on light cruisers and about on par with destroyers. But it only matters if you can bring a concentration of forces up against them, uh, and that's what I aim to do in the event of war. Um, so that's what we'll do there. I think we should probably also strengthen Western Africa. So I think I'll send one light cruiser there. We have a lot of colonies there. Italy doesn't, but it, you know if they break out of the Mediterranean, that is a uh, sector with which uh, we'll need to contend, so we'll move one there. Um, and then we actually have the brand new heavy cruiser, the Lavasseur, a big 5,100 ton heavy cruiser. So we'll move her to the Mediterranean as well, kind of be the eyes and ears of our fleet. So a massive fleet movement underway, uh, but that's what it, we're going to end our turn and march on, and we'll see what ends up happening here. Um, if we also, real quick, if I, I saw, I know, you know, for those of you watching on the channel, I'm actually live streaming this. Uh, so this will go up as a video on demand as part of the series, but this at the moment is also being streamed live on YouTube. So someone just asked how my fleet compares with Italy. As you can see here, we're about double their battle fleet uh, on par with heavy cruisers, although they have six under construction versus only one for us. Our one under construction is a super cruiser, almost like a battle cruiser, faster, better armed, you know, better armored, uh, but at the same time, vastly more expensive. Uh, light cruisers, they do have an advantage, uh, and in my limited combat experience in this game, I do feel like light cruisers and light forces are critical. They seem to be the vast majority of the engagements, them and heavy cruisers, especially in this time, this early era. So those are things that uh, they may have an advantage of in, in some of these conflicts. Okay, so that's the situation. We're going to go ahead and forward on to April. Our ship Redoubtable is commissioned to the Navy. During trials, it's found that the ship has trouble reaching her design speed. Okay. Research breakthrough light forces and torpedo warfare. Destroyers up to 600 tons displacement are enabled. All right, so we can build a new class of destroyers. Um, the Redoubtable is commissioned to the Navy. Yeah, we already saw that. Uh, Italy is increased its naval budget, so that's a little bit of a concern. Uh, with this new battleship coming off the ways, we do have 1.9 million free uh, to uh, look at um, building more cruisers. So what I actually think I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and actually open up the uh, Travel class uh, of cruisers. I don't know if I can do a rebuild right now, actually. It doesn't look like I can. Um, okay, so we've moved a large number of our fleet to the Mediterranean and all over, actually. So let's see here. Everyone's more or less on station. I guess we're just going to go ahead and we're going to build another of the uh, Lactuch class. So she's going to be about 2.1 million per month. That'll put us in the red, but not by much, and we've got a 6 million surplus. So we'll generate a random name, and you can see one was assigned. It is the Marseille, it looks like. Or Marseillaise, I suppose. Um, she'll be done in 25 months, so a little over two years. It's going to be a bit of time before she's coming online. Uh, even the Travel is 17 months away. Um, so still some time, although we have more ships coming off the ways here within the next few months. Uh, I may build one more battleship or, or some more destroyers. I'm thinking um, it might actually make sense with some of our technological developments to design a new battleship. Um, but I think we'll wait for another month or two for some of these other ships to come off the ways. Okay, the Japanese government is offering to sell us the right to the pressure hole for $3.5 million. That's a lot of money. We don't have a ton of funds in the bank, and we are going to be... Well, actually, we've got ships coming off the ways. I always like buying technology. I think it's a, a cheat to kind of get ahead fast. Um, so I'll do that, because we're not really researching submarines all that much either, uh, which may allow us to... 
Yeah, we don't have any submarines right now, actually. So with that actually being a little bit further ahead, we may... We, well, we do have a pressure hull for submarine design. I just... Maybe we don't have... Maybe we haven't... Hmm, that's weird. Anyway, so we have pressure hulls, but we don't have any sub-designs. Okay. I don't think I can design design a submarine, can I? Cannot auto-design that tape of that shit. Yeah, it doesn't look like we can do it. Okay, fine, whatever. Okay, so nothing happened in May. Um, we're still in the red. We'll jump ahead another month. Prime Minister wants you to deploy additional forces in Northern Europe to deter aggressive moves by the British Navy. I suppose tensions are increasing with the British Navy, um, but we have just commissioned two new battleships into the North Northern Europe region, so hopefully that appeases our Prime Minister who's concerned about everything, it seems. Uh, meanwhile, we've got these two heavy cruisers under construction now. Uh, we've got about 2.5 million, and um, I'm thinking about another Marangino class battleship here. You can see uh, it's quite a solid design for this era, uh, in my opinion. Uh, and I may, let's see if we can do a rebuild, open design for rebuild. So we've got, we can replace some old machinery, and there you can say we saved a little bit of weight. Um, but it doesn't look like we uh, <laughs> we saved all that much. Um, can we... Wait a minute. No, this isn't the ship I wanted. Wrong class. Sorry. Uh, open this ship for a rebuild. Okay, so we got 23. Okay, so we saved a few tons. We didn't really accomplish much. Can we increase her speed? Nope. Can't increase her speed. Can't change armor in a rebuild. You can on the turrets, but not on anything else. Um, you can change speed, but that doesn't really matter here. Um, we could increase, I suppose, our secondary bat. Actually, if we do that, will it remove our penalty on, um, on, let's see here, check. Rate of fire for secondary guns reduced by 40% due to lack of suitable training. So that didn't change. I'm not going to waste the money. Um, so we'll just leave that as is. And I suppose... Um, we could lay down another heavy cruiser. I do find that submarines are great for warfare, but I'm also not a big sub guy. Like, they make the war almost too easy because they just constantly have a huge impact on enemy merchant shipping. And um, I'm more of a surface, surface warfare fiend, but um, we have increased our research, or we will increase our research to medium on this. It's just wonder if we're not really researching anything on low, does researching on high for naval guns really have an impact? I'm not quite sure, but I don't like having these crappy 13-inch guns. The 12-inchers are almost better, in my opinion. Uh, they're not, but they would be if they were a zero. Uh, that's the interesting thing. Like, you look at the 10-inchers, max range of 2,400. Uh, it's actually almost the exact same range as the 11-incher. No difference, uh, because the 11-inchers are lower quality. If you look at the armor penetration at 5,000 meters, um, you know, you do have a slight advantage. Uh, about an inch advantage on the 11-inchers. Uh, so there's a reason to build them there. Out at longer ranges, it's another inch in terms of penetration. Um, I'm kind of interested if you go from 12. Yeah, there's almost no difference at 5,000 yards between a 12 and a 15 inch gun, a 10th of an inch difference. Um, at 8,000 yards, about a half of an inch difference. So yeah, I mean, I don't know. I just, the, the crappy quality 13 inch guns don't appeal to me. I'd rather build 12 inches, even though those aren't great either. Uh, we do have a little bit of money. I'm thinking about laying down another of the Lactoch uh, class cruisers. I'm just worried if we do come to a war, we're not really going to have the firepower to deal with it. Um, hmm, let's see. We could build more light cruisers. That might not be a bad idea. They're also pretty, not pretty, well, they're somewhat inexpensive. Um... We'll do that. We'll build uh, two more, two more light cruisers of the Levasseur class, and I'll, I should probably design some newer ships soon, uh, which I will do. Um, but for now, we'll probably be good for the rest of you know, 1901. New research for explosive shells. Um, kind of waiting for my opportunity to strike at Italy. To be honest, uh, I wouldn't mind going to war with them right now with our tensions. Um, but uh, so far, 
no joy on that. Uh, let's go ahead and actually design a new destroyer class. Uh, we do have 16 or 600 ton destroyers available. I don't really know what to do with destroyers. I usually auto design the Brennel Ba class, 28 knots. Uh, normal accommodation, that's good. 74 crew, 20 weight remaining. We could add a new torpedo tube if it lets us. Um, let's see here. We've got a center line, two center line swivel mounts. And we could add another center line swivel mount, I think. Uh, heavier, crowded, overweight. So we could have three torpedo. I almost would rather have four torpedo tubes if I could. Can I do that? Center line swivel mount. Can we do four? We get penalized. Design's not legal. Please correct errors. Seriously overweight. Okay, fine. Overweight, whatever. Um, maybe if we change the engine priority to normal. Oh, no, that makes things worse. Um, we need to save 25 tons. Where can we save 25 tons? Our guns are light as hell, so that's not going to make a difference. Our ammo is light as hell, so that's not going to make a difference. Range is medium. We could change it to short, but that might hamper operations in the Mediterranean um, or if we have to ever go to Asia. Uh, we can't make it bigger than 600 tons because that's our max limit at the moment. We could maybe drop the caliber. No, that doesn't really make a noticeable difference. What if we drop the speed by a knot? And drop the caliber? Okay, so we can have a 2-inch gun, which is pathetic. Uh, 28 knots. Hmm. I'm really not thrilled with the idea of going into battle with a... We could make the accommodations cramped. What happens if we do that? Whoops. So we could have it be a, a cramped ship with 2-inch guns, 28 knots, or we could have it be a, a normal accommodation ship with 27. I think we're going to go with a normal. Um... I think we're going to go with a normal. Maybe we drop the number of secondaries to zero and then increase back to three inches, I think might be the right thing to do. What if we bump now? Ah, oh, nice. Okay, so we get rid of the secondaries altogether. Who gives a damn about two-inch guns? Increase the two primary three-inchers back to three and then keep the speed at 28 knots, and now we have four torpedo tubes on the 600-ton destroyer. I'm happy with this design. You guys can let me know if it's terrible. Uh, it's probably cannon fodder, there's no doubt about that, but frankly, the guns aren't really going to do anything on a destroyer anyway. It's the torpedoes. If you're going to do anything with tor with destroyers, they're basically glorified torpedo torpedo destroyers at this point in time. Um, so that's what we're going to do. Too many centerline torpedo mounts. Damn! It didn't say it was illegal before. Um, let's see here. What if we do that? Crowded centerline gun and torpedo will affect rate of fire. Hmm. What if we add a mount forward centerline swivel mount and then add a aft centerline swivel mount? Well, no. Can we do an aft something? Let's see. Air too many centerline. Damn, you're still centerline. Is everything centerline? Is that the only option we have right now? Swivel mount, port broadside. Where does that go? Over here. I suppose that limits our, uh, we add a starboard broadside. And now what's it say? Torpedo tube mounts are not balanced. Starboard broadside, so mount. Oh, it needs to be broadside. Or broad spine, so mount, starboard broad spine, so mount. What do you mean it's not balanced? I know they're not in the same place. There we go. Okay. I don't know how I feel about this. Um, I don't think these will get in the way of each other, even though the, the design makes it look like that. I don't think the graphic really matters. So we could do a th broadside of three torpedoes, and then as we retreat, maybe swing around and fire a fourth. We could increase to four-inch guns. Main ammo is low. Hmm. 
<sighs> I'm just trying to figure this out. I'm not really sure what I want to do. I don't know if the four inches makes a difference. There's no armor, or normal accommodations. Yeah. All okay. I guess this is our design. There we go. And then I think I'm going to build five of these. It's going to be a million a month. We'll be half a million in the red. Those other ships will finish first. So let's actually build six. So we're going to build six. Uh, I want to build ten, really. If we build ten, these other ships should complete in time. Playing a little bit of budget roulette, but I can always halt the ships if I'm if there's not uh, not enough cash. So really going into the red, but I think we need to kind of start replacing our older destroyers. Hopefully this is a decent design. I mean, the destroyer is more or less uh, not intended to stand up and fight, guys. I know some of you are kind of like, how are you going to use the destroyer? What I'm going to use it for in the case of a battle is rush in, launch torpedoes at an enemy fleet and maybe disrupt them, but it's not going to be standing and fighting. It's, I mean, these destroyers were not able to, to stand up to much of anything in this era. Um, so I can use it for patrol, you know, making, getting my minimum number of patrol ships that you have to have during a war. I can also use it for, um, you know, torpedo attacks, screening the fleet, those kind of operations. But the guns don't matter. It's not a stand up and fight destroyer. That, I mean, there aren't destroyers like that really at this point in time. Okay, so we're building 10 destroyers. We've got some other ones, five other ones that are about to be completed. Uh, we've got some light cruisers about to be completed. And we just finished a couple battleships, which are going to stay in Europe for now. Um, because the Grand Puma, our Prime Minister, has asked them to. Um, okay, so let's go ahead and move forward another month. Some destroyers commissioning into the fleet. A sudden slump in the economy has led to widespread unemployment and poverty, as well as cutbacks in military spending. You are asked to advise on how to handle the situation. What? We can't cut funding. Any further cuts in the naval budget are unacceptable, considering the tense international situation. Well, that's damn right. We're almost at war with Italy. Maybe the charities could institute some kind of relief for the poor. The government should consider special reforms to care for the unemployed. I think any further cuts to the Navy budget are unacceptable, considering the tense international situation. I agree with that. I mean, we're almost at war, and I'm not terribly happy with the fleet we have, and we need to build some more ships, so we need to increase our budget. Uh, it's cutting our budget anyway, but at least it'll increase our prestige, and who cares about the tensions? Research breakthrough, subdivision and damage control, double bottom, gradual damage control improvements. So I'm really thinking we may need to start designing a new battleship as soon as we've got some other ships off the ways, or once we have a little bit of free cash. You can see here we're still one million in the red. We've got some other ships coming off soon. Uh, but we need, I would like some more modern battleships. We have quite a few. If we look at the Almanac, we've got 14 battleships. We're actually leading the way right now in battleships, which is crazy uh, that we have more than England. But the the restart that I mentioned earlier really didn't favor Britain when, when I did the manual fleet build to kind of get me back to the exact same spot I was. Um, so we're good there. Our cruisers are, you know, I'd like a better cruiser force especially for a massive empire like our own, trying to catch up in light cruisers. And our destroyer flotilla is very strong. So overall, France is in a very strong position. It would benefit from a war right now. Give me a war. Private shipbuilding expands our docks, and some of our destroyers and battleships are ready. A world cruise for our young cadets is planned. What ships will take part? Some of our older ships, we could be like the Great White Fleet, which most people don't talk about, is that the Great White Fleet of the United States was largely obsolete warships at the time. It was a mixture of amusement and impressment for the new American power, but it was also a large amount of amusement. Some of our newest and most powerful ships that will increase tensions, but it will increase our prestige. And folks, if we look over here, if we do that, we may end up with a war. A war with Italy, if we do it. Let's do it! Oh, it's not quite war. We're on the verge of war. Ugh. Okay, so we researched early coastal submarines as well, um, and we completed some of our ships, so we now have a positive budget. Um, 
Looks like this ship's, <laughs> this destroyer should be coming online too. I may build some coastal subs just because I feel like they'd operate really well in the Mediterranean against the Italians. Not a huge sub fan, but sometimes wars drag on and subs really help bring civil unrest to an enemy power. Okay, so let's go ahead, and I suppose nothing happened that turn, so let's go ahead and jump forward one more turn. Destroyer commission of the Navy, some light cruisers commission of the Navy, and still no war with Italy. Well, what do we need? Tensions are pretty high. Uh, let's go ahead and save the game. Um, okay. So we are getting closer to our heavy cruisers coming into action, though, these super heavy cruisers. I don't know if I'll operate them as raiders or merchantmen, or, or not merchantmen, raiders are in the main fleet. I'm not quite sure, but I guess we'll see. Um, I think I'm pretty happy with the bulk of the way my fleet's deployed. I think I may add a few more destroyers to the to the met. No, because these guys are going to end up being post or patrol craft. We've got quite a few destroyers working up as well. Um, they're going to go to the Mediterranean once they're worked up, though. Move these guys to the med. Um, we've got four battleships. No, we've we've got six bat seven battleships in uh, northern Europe, which is about half the British fleet. Tensions with Brit are, Britain are high, but again, I'm going to move these Charles, the Charles Martels can stay in Northern Europe. Those are kind of small, but we're going to move the Brennus, which is another new battleship, to the Med. Uh, right now, I think we've got seven there, which counters the, Brit the Italian fleet, but I'd like superiority in the event of a war. Um, you can see here the Italians have six. We've got 14. We've got seven in Euro or Mediterranean, seven in Northern France, so that way we'll have a slight advantage. Well, maybe we should move more than that. I'd like a, a, a relatively comfortable advantage in the event of a, a battle. So let's move that guy as well. So we'll have a two battleship advantage. Not really what I want, but sufficient, I suppose. New docks complete. Research breakthrough on hull construction. Weight savings. War has broken out between Italy and France. I don't know why. Tensions were high, but it didn't really give us a reason. And look, right off the bat, there's a fleet engagement uh, our own forces available in the area, nine battleships, four heavy cruisers, six light cruisers, 29 destroyers. The enemy forces in the area, six battleships, four heavy cruisers, 14 light cruisers, and 30 destroyers. We can either accept the battle or decline it. It appears to be just southwest of Sicily. If we do decline, the enemy gets 130 victory points to start the war, so we know we're not going to do that. Um, but with that said... I'm going to take a real quick break, uh, just a few, you know, a few seconds. And I think what I'll actually do is, as I mentioned, this is part of a live stream. Uh, so what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and say for the non-live stream bit, this is going to be the end of, of part three of my uh, Let's Play of Rule the Waves. So with that said, thanks for tuning in, guys. And until next time, this is the Historical Gamer saying thank you for watching, and I'm out.